Managing Director for Digital Marketing, Kara Imai. Hello to you. <laughs> Senior Director for Market Insights and CRM, Jeffrey Esslinger. <laughs> this list is in a totally different order. I do know these people. I just want to get their positions right. We have our Senior Director of Public Relations and Communications, Leanne Field. <laughs> Senior Director of Travel Industry Partnerships, Robin Basso. <laughs> and we all know this guy, Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer, Jay Talwar. <laughs> Mahalo Nui, our HTUS team. Take it away, guys. Oh, it's nice to play at home. <laughs> Got the home field advantage. Um, we have a lot of information and uh, a few members of our team here. The rest of our team is in the audience and uh, we just ask that um, you ask us all questions afterwards because we're not going to go into the depth that we typically do uh, because we're up against lunch. Uh, so we're going to rip through some information, um, hopefully get your attention, uh, get some questions, and let's talk about how we collaborate even more than we have in the past. So jumping right into it, um, we're going to kind of get into the subject matter experts and let them present their sections. Um, and so I'm just going to start with kind of an overview. Uh, and before we start looking forward, looking backwards all the way two weeks ago, um, where we were able to do something um, thanks to the Hawaii Tourism Authority and their ability to provide us with a million and a half in funding uh, very quickly. Uh, we were in the market in less than four weeks. Um, and we were able to more than triple that amount thanks to everyone in this room who helped contribute. You know, close to 90 partners involved, uh, more than triple the funding uh, from the private side uh, was contributed. And it's going to be even greater because a lot of that will be now seen as bookings occur and discounts are applied and the contribution from the private side is going to even grow even more. So overall, we have down the bottom, you see the logos, we had media running for the month. Uh, September 4th through the end of the month that really gave us nice cover and shared the brand messages that we'll share later uh, with Los Angeles specifically. Um, beyond that, uh, the partnership included many other Marriott, Hawaiian, and others doing events in the marketplace, talking to travel sellers, talking to consumers, talking to the group side of, of things, just making sure that we were totally focused on LA, and LA was totally focused on Hawaii. So a real nice contribution from the private side. Uh, we had consumer direct co-op programs uh, that ranged from uh, fairly expensive partnerships uh, that got about $400,000 from the private industry just in that one line item alone. Uh, but then also about 153 offers from members and participants in the travel and tourism industry across the state. So a focus on Maui, uh, but still offers from across the state. So a lot of great partnership offers are out in the marketplace, and we're going to continue to promote those uh, through at least October and maybe longer. We'll see at the next HDA board meeting. Um, and then we had a long-term partnership discussion with the LA Rams. Uh, Chair Hanneman uh, really coordinated uh, an august group of elected officials to meet with the Rams ownership team to talk about how they may be able to uplift uh, Maui post wildfires uh, with a long term relationship that he will be able to talk more about, I'm sure, soon because it went extremely well. Uh, the rest that you see on there has to do with both our coordinated public relations media blitz and a little event we did with in partnership with Mana Up. And Lay, why don't you take it from there? Sounds good. Yeah, so we just returned from a great media blitz in Los Angeles where we met with media representing uh, the publications that you see on the screen here. As many of you know, the landscape has changed dramatically since COVID. We are no longer going to the LA Times office for a desk site appointment. We are now driving and meeting Chris Reynolds at his favorite French coffee shop 10 minutes away from where he lives because he's working remotely. But we are adapting, but the goal remains the same, to connect with media, share broad destination updates, and tee it up for partners who are going to be in market in the following weeks. We actually have one Maui partner that's there right now. Uh, but all of the media that we met with, they all are eager to come out and visit. Uh, they are open to hosted opportunities. So we are looking forward to working with all of you to make that happen. 
Uh, some of the biggest takeaways from the Blitz is that more than ever, media are seeking unique, experiential, even quirky story ideas, preferably those that had never been told before. They want to dive deeper into regenerative tourism angles and learn about what's new across all of the Hawaiian Islands. We ended the week with a highly successful consumer pop-up in the heart of Venice Beach along Abbot Kinney. You heard a little bit about this earlier in the week. Uh, we brought 57 brands, featured them, partnered with Mana Up to do that, brought 35 entrepreneurs with us on the road, 11 of which were from Maui. So a great example of tourism directly benefiting our small businesses. Uh, we had over 9,000 shoppers over the entire weekend, lines to get in every single day. It was like the Made in Hawaii Festival in LA. Uh, sales were beyond our expectations. We had 15 companies that completely sold out of product, which is a great problem to have. But equally as important were the person-to-person -person interactions that were made throughout the three days that we were there. The people from Maui and the Hawaiian Islands sharing their stories and their products and their passions, uh, in their own words, why it's important to come to visit us now. And that was just so powerful to see. It was also a great opportunity to connect with media, influencers, clients in the area. We secured some fantastic TV coverage in LA, which many of you know that's a really tough market to crack. Um, so just again, a huge mahalo to the Mana Up team, all the entrepreneurs, um, and all the partners, many of you here that helped to promote this event and make it a huge success. Um, so we do have a short video that'll recap the weekend, the great energy in the building, and just love for Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Aloha. I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, insights of where we are in the market and in, in some uh, future looking information. And, um, you know, it's really important, you know, the GDP is, has, is growing a little bit faster this year. Unfortunately, next year, I think it's going to slow down a bit. Um, another key thing, the U.S. MMA, the U.S. market, will remain and continue to be the largest um, source market for Hawaii tourism. You know, Trans-Pacific Airlift, specifically from the U.S., continues to be dynamic for all the different reasons that we heard today. We're also seeing a shift, more um, flights directly into Honolulu, and then disbursement to the neighbor islands via um, the code share relationships um, that the airlines have um, with Hawaiian as well as the Southwest Lift. Um, Maui um, it will continue to see softness in visitation, as the governor mentioned today, as well as others. That will continue, and we are, through the activation that Lei and Jay just spoke about, looking to make sure that we rebuild our key origin markets to help support the growth for the Maui um, market from the California region in particular into the next year. And then the hotel booking pace, you know, um, I'll get into some details in the slides in a second, but the hotel booking pace remains dynamic. Certain markets, uh, the pace looks um, great. Certain markets, we're seeing softness. and other markets, we're seeing variability. Even from one week to the next, the um, unevenness of uh, forward-looking bookings by island. And then um, these are some data. This is data that uh, Jen and her team just put out, the August um, uh, results. And, you know, while the visitor arrivals from the U.S. declined, spending per person per day increased. So that led to a smaller decline in the overall expenditures for the first eight months of the year. And then when you look at the U.S. share of visitors, you know, you can see that despite being the, a mature market, the U.S. share of visitor arrivals was growing even before the pandemic. The slide provides like a, a clear illustration of the consistent dominance 
or, or, the, or the, you know, the importance, I should say, of the U.S. market to Hawaii over the past decade. It also highlights the impact that the COVID pandemic had on visitor arrivals, not only from the U.S., but obviously from the other MMAs as well. And then, as I mentioned in the previous slide, when you look, when you overlay that, you can see by island, Oahu is, is the most diversified, as I say, island, where we have um, the most mix of U.S. as well as international arrivals. However, as you make your way across the state, you can see that the U.S. market is a very important driver for visitation. Now, when we look at when we look at seats, you know, this is an interesting slide because for those that were in this room 15 years ago, 14 years ago, we saw the advent of a lot of the direct to neighbor island service from the West Coast as well as deeper into the North American continent. That's because of a variety of factors, technology with aircraft and all those other things. And so as we saw the share um, increase to neighbor island, we saw some of the decline happen um, to, in, into HNL. But as time has gone on and post the pandemic, and even before the pandemic, we are seeing kind of a shift where we are today that is mimicking where we were um, many years ago. So we're using, as I said before, Honolulu as the gateway um, to m many of the state, and we're seeing from those secondary markets, those San Jose's, the um, Portland's of the world to direct to neighbor islands. We're seeing those flights exist, but we may be seeing them in their terms of frequency might be less. Now, as we look ahead, you can see, as I mentioned earlier, the GDP is going to be about 2.4% for this current year, and then slower growth in next year at 1.7%. Um, taking the DBED forecast, the most recent forecast, you can see that, you know, the the, rec the recovery from the pandemic has been uneven, but however, the U.S. West is expected to continue to show resilience in both visitation and expenditures, but the U.S. East will continue to see, face some challenges in attracting both visitors and maintaining the spending levels that we currently have been seeing. Taking a look at airlift, um, for between now and the end of the year, the total number of seats is expected to increase 1.9% year over year. However, what we've been doing is taking a look at the 2022 versus the current period because that was more of a level setting year looking at prior to the fires on Maui. So you really can see the amplification of the decline um, when you look at 24 to 22 with a 21.6% of nonstop Trans-Pacific seats for Maui. Now, when we look ahead, what I did was I looked from January until April through the Easter and spring break holiday. The, the, the slide shows, you know, the expected capacity for U.S. Trans-Pacific seats is, is going to be flat. We're going to see um, still a softness for Maui, but the other islands will be flat to modest growth as we move forward. Now, looking forward, this is a hotel, uh, those of you who are uh, familiar with the Travel Click um, report that HVCB puts out as a member benefit to our hotel partners is that forward-looking bookings, and this is by island, it's, um, this is a special cut because it's against two years ago when we really wanted to highlight really the challenges that Maui continues to see, not only Maui and West Maui, and West Maui here is defined as um, from the Hyatt all the way to the Ritz uh, kind of, uh, Kapalua and everything in between. And you can see that there is definitely softness that we continue to see. The state, of, the state for the fall, and I think everybody has talked about, we are definitely seeing softness, but as we go into the beginning of next year, we are seeing on many of the islands some positive news. And then this is just um, a little bit more of a highlight um, if you look at from September 1st to September 15th, this is for West Maui in particular, you definitely see the challenges that we're continuing to see. And the other thing that I really wanted to mention is that we're seeing such a short-term booking window right now, that has been a really big challenge for many of our partners to be able to forecast.
So a bit of a challenging environment. Um, and now we're going to switch into our marketing programs, looking at our audience first and foremost. Again, mahalo for the presentation on the American Traveler. Uh, as you mentioned, we look at it a little, a little more defined for the cut for, for what we call the Hawaii Target Traveler. Um, and our role in the mix, you know, there, there are funnels and there are all sorts of ways to kind of show what our role is. Uh, we've changed to this slide because it's a dynamic world. You know, it used to be we were all about inspiration and our travel partners were all about conversion. Uh, but there's a gray area now. You know, the Marriott Bonvoy email you get gets you dreaming, right? The Outrigger email you get gets you dreaming. Uh, the Hawaiian Airlines email you get gets you checking prices. Um, so there's a lot of inspiration, a lot of dreaming, a lot of planning that happens uh, across both of our kind of former areas. So we need to make sure we're coordinated uh, that's why this event is great. That's why it's so nice working so closely with everyone so we can make sure our messaging is consistent and so it all adds up together and really makes a difference as we look to move people around the continuum. The other thing I'd share is this is all about our audience that we're targeting, uh, but in the middle of it, probably what's missing is the face of our resident. You know, as we do this, the host to all of our visitors is something we need to consider, and so we've added that into our target audience. You know. Um, all of our employees are part of the community, are part of the resident population. You know, there shouldn't be a division there. So we need to listen to our community, I think, first and foremost, to make sure the visitor industry is supporting their needs. Uh, and then we can focus a little bit more on the type of visitor we want to attract, uh, both from a spending level and a behavioral level. And the more we can do that, the more focused we can be. Uh, as someone mentioned earlier, uh, the better the resident population feels about tourism, the better experience the visitors will have. So we do a lot of work into that. We're starting a new project to relook at all the data we've been using the last few years because it's such a dynamic world. Um, and so we're just, I'm just challenging Jeffrey with another research project. Uh, but getting to the messaging, um, I think uh, most of you have probably seen the new campaign that's now been running uh, since the end of spring. Um, and really looking at a transition to making sure we share the natural beauty that we see as a high-ranking uh, motivator for the traveler, uh, but using that more as the backdrop and allowing our people to be in the forefront and sharing our values, uh, sharing what's important to us as residents and having visitors who are picking Spain and Portugal and Italy uh, for that culture understand that we have a unique culture that's worth traveling for and worth engaging with and worth learning from. So we are putting the people at the front and I'm just going to show you a few spots now. Uh, so go ahead and sit back, pretend you're on the sofa at home and we'll play the videos. When people hear my music, I would like them to ask a question. Why do I feel this way when I hear my music? even if I don't understand what is being said. Our spoken language was on the brink of extinction because it was outlawed. It was the singers who kept the language alive. I grew up in Anahola, Kauai. I love to come home because I get to have these short but meaningful times with the family. One of the ways we connect to our land is through music. Mele is about the words because we don't need musical accompaniment to make a song. <laughs> <laughs> Mele is the vessel that holds the brilliance of our ancestors. It shows us the way. The music within our church, Kiaku Amana Church, came from the soul. The church was built on a foundation of Hawaiian language. We use Mele as a tool to help us in our language revitalization. When the singers sing with all their might, you know that it's powerful. My mother is Lady Ipo Kahonaile. 
She was part of the Hawaiian music renaissance era. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have the continuation of Hawaiian music. Aloha no! If I'm going to perform, it's because I have something to tell you. It's the way we continue the legacies of our place. I would love for our visitors to take music with them that reminds them of a certain place, of a certain experience they've had in Hawaii, and know that there's much more to enjoy. With my daughter coming into the mix now, we can show our elders that we are continuing our legacy of Hawaiian music. The goal is joy. The goal is connection. Not everybody sings, but everybody can <laughs> learn the words. <laughs>
And then we look at social first opportunities. How do we get that message out in appropriate way in social media? So we, while we do also have the videos presented in social, we have other units such as these where we can dive deeper into the story. Uh, for each one of the four ambassadors that are featured in our um, The People of the Place um, campaign, I think there's like three or four different executions. One of them is we ask each of them to get a map of their island and um, do a pinpoint of all of their favorite places on their island. And so that way the viewer can be inspired to explore the, the different islands themselves. And then this is showing, in addition to the People of the Place campaign, we also do other content just to emotionally connect people when they're scrolling through their feed. So they're scrolling through and they're seeing something like this and they're like, ah, oh, Hawaii, I gotta, I gotta check that out more. And so this is the um, type that we're looking at developing more as well in 2025. Which brings us to, oh, I wanted to mention that a whole bunch of us work on these social campaigns, but um, our director of social media, Marissa Wong, is the person who leads up all of these social efforts and responsible for this great work. <laughs> Which brings us to um, branded content, also on the plan for 2025. Um, branded content is just partnerships with um, media outlets that have a similar brand affinity as our, what we're trying to do with the Hawaiian Islands. They have the target audience that we're trying to go after. Uh, some people call it native media. But in this, this past year, these just actually launched in September. Uh, we partnered with uh, Condé Nast Traveler, and they worked with our team to tell the story of Maui through um, different ambassadors. And what we did was we, they um, delivered, we worked with their content team to tell it in their voice. So if you have a natural affinity for um, you know, interacting with Condé Nast content and you trust that and you like that, you're seeing our message through their, their channels. So in this promotion, there's like a, I think a 12 or 13 minute video, 30 second videos and social media posts. Um, and I'm not gonna go through all of them in the interest of time. But I wanted to um, share what we did with Matador, another partner that we worked with. And um, I'll play this video. This is just a 30 second, like a, a short 10, 30 second clip. But before um, I play this, I just wanted to recognize Susie Kim, who's our director of content development hiding right there, as she really worked on all of these campaigns and brought these to life as well. For me, Aloha is, uh, it's a reciprocal relationship that you have. So mindful travelers, they come with this notion of, I'm coming to give and learn. And so when you come to experience Hawaii, you come with your best too. And we love that, that reciprocity of Aloha. That's real. Moving on to public relations, the team, including our Island Visitor Bureau PR teams, our goal is positive generated destination coverage um, in our target uh, outlets. Let me move on to the next slide here. Uh, we will soon be undergoing our annual Hot 100 review where we look at all of our target outlets. Uh, we will be focusing on more regional publications in our key markets for next year. We will continue to keep Maui top of mind, and as we learned from our recent media blitz, our superpower will really be highlighting the people and the organizations across the Hawaiian Islands that are doing amazing things and make our destination unlike no other. In terms of messaging, we are presenting a stronger invitation to visit while still portraying our values, and how we're doing that is showcasing unique visitor experiences, regenerative tourism experiences, um, as well as providing a platform for those who are portraying Hawaiian and local culture, um, having them share in their own words why it, we welcome visitors. Program highlights for 2025 include IMM, or International Media Marketplace. This is the largest travel media event in the U.S. They bring together over 500 writers um, together in one place. We found great success in this show this past year, so we are expanding our Hawaii presence next year. Uh, there is still time to register, so if anyone's interested, you can come and find me. I'm happy to share more about that program. There is still plenty of opportunity in California, so we do plan on additional media appointments throughout the state in conjunction with Travel Trade, which Robin will speak to in a moment. 
And with media, again, working remotely all across the continent, uh, we are still finding great success in virtual media blitzes. Our team, and shout out to Anthology Fin Partners for their great work, they just conducted a statewide week-long blitz where they met with 32 media one-on-one -on -one every day showcasing a different island with great ambassadors like the one and only Daryl Fujiwara from Maui. And finally, we know, like David mentioned in his presentation, that video is so powerful in inspiring travel. So a priority for us is high impact broadcast coverage. We are working with NBC for a show that will highlight West Maui, and that's going to be coming out in January. All right. <laughs> Bringing it home here, mahalo lei. Um, uh, you know, travel trade, I'm going to share a little bit of the highlights of our 2025 um, strategy, of course, in line with uh, consumer PR, et cetera. And for travel trade, it's all about relationships. We have incredible relationships with our partners. So it's really leveraging those long-term, very strategic partnerships with wholesalers, consor consortia, industry organizations to ensure we can deliver the right message, that message that, you know, we want to keep Maui and all of the Hawaiian Islands top of mind. We want to make sure we're reaching qualified advisors, and then of course their clients as well, that mindful high value traveler. The foundation of everything we do and continue to do is all about education. That's really, really important. And to be efficient, we really like to use a blend of virtual and in-person training. Um, we just had a webinar a couple of weeks ago with our partners at Travel Weekly. We had over 2,300 travel advisors register for that webinar. So that was incredibly successful. We'll continue with in-person events as well. We're getting ready in two weeks to head to Southern California with 20 of our partners, so thank you so much for all of your support um, to educate those travel advisors. Um, and for 2025, of course, we'll continue to do that in key markets. We work very closely with Jeffrey and Market Insights to make sure we're in the right markets at the right time with the right message. Um, so we're gonna be doing two weeks um, West Coast in February and East Coast um, will be in October. We'll bring our wonderful uh, um, ambassadors. We had Kainani, um, the musician featured in the video on our last, um, our last Blitz. So we really want to bring the destination of Hawaii to travel advisors and let them know that, again, Maui and all of the Hawaiian Islands are open and welcoming visitors. We'll continue to support our partner events, our wholesale consortia and industry partners that make sense, that give us meaningful engagement with vetted advisors, one-on-one -on -one appointments, that platform for educational opportunities. We want to make sure we, we get in front of those advisors. And in destination education, so critically important. Um, we've run a couple of FAMs, a shout out to Kainoa Danes, who've led a couple multi-island um, FAMs this past year, and incredible feedback from advisors on, you know, basically saying, now that I saw Maui, you know, firsthand, I have no I have all the confidence in the world, no reservations with selling it. So I think those have been wonderful. We'll continue with our HTUSA multi-island-led FAMs. Um, we want to continue, of course, to support Maui, but we also want to support the strategy of multi-island visitation. We'll also support, par support our partner FAMs. Um, we've got wonderful partners that come in to bring their travel advisors, their business development managers, reservation agents. We'll continue to support those with destination experiences and destination education to really round out that experience. Um, in trade marketing, we have to make sure we are in front of our advisors consistently um, with the right message. And shout out to Gina Chun, our Senior Director of Advertising and Marketing Programs. She's done a wonderful job with um, our creative. Yes, thank you, Gina. <laughs> wonderful job with our creative. And we have, to, we have to hit the whole industry. So we're really, we do our trade paid media, which is that targeting that larger universe of travel sellers, keeping Hawaii top of mind, but most importantly, driving them to our website to register, to engage with our resources and opt in for our communications. Most importantly, want them to become a Hawaii destination specialist. So that's the ultimate goal. Um, we'll continue to work with our consortia partners. We focus on signature travel network, travel leaders and virtuoso because they really are very qualified and deliver the right type of um, client for us as well. Um, of course, we want to utilize our own media, our travel trade database. We have 45,000 active travel sellers that are very engaged in the destination and our content. And we are going to continue to update, refine all of the content that we have. We just did a great refresh on our agents.gohawaii.com website. We've got all of our new campaign assets for the people to place the Hawaiian Islands for travel advisors to easily share with their clients. And we will be embarking on a content update for our Hawaii Destination Specialist Program to make sure that the, the content is engaging, it's interactive, but most importantly, it helps travel advisors market and sell Hawaii to the right client in the right way. Mahalo. And I think just to, to underline one thing, uh, kind of the, the hidden 
part of this iceberg of all the work we do is uh, our couple pillars, I guess. One is our destination education team, Kainoa and Jerome. They only need one name. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, our team on each and every island, our island chapter teams from Oahu, Maui, Kauai, and the island of Hawaii. They're all here also, and all of these programs start with them. So thanks for all of your support as well. Uh, just wanted to point out as we close, we have partnership opportunities. Gina has been uh, working this amazingly well. We have 10 more pages than we're going to share with you right now. You can find them online. Uh, so please go ahead and take a look. HTA is going to be hosting them. Mahalo for all of your time, for all of your support, and for working together to make this the best industry it can be for the people of Hawaii. Mahalo.